My name is Lorraine Charles and I am the Executive Director of NAML and one of the co-hosts of this of the summit. Um, welcome everyone. So the Migration Summit um, 2022 is organized by MIT Refugee Action Hub, NAML, Karam Foundation, Paper Airplanes, the MIT Abdul Jamil Latif World Education Labs is a month long global convening designed to build bridges between diverse communities of displaced learners, universities, companies, nonprofits, and NGOs, social enterprises, foundations, philanthropists, researchers, policymakers around key challenges and opportunities for refugee and migrant communities. This year, we're exploring the theme of education and workforce development and displacement. I'm really excited to have Jusur here today. In this panel, we, we're having, a, um, you know, this is following the theme of all of our sessions, hearing from the voices of the refugees. So in this panel, we hear from Jusur's alumni, from its diverse, from its different programs, the refugee education, scholarship and entrepreneurship programs. They will tell their stories of their pathways through Jusur's programs, explaining how their lives have been impacted. Um, so I'd like to introduce the moderator, Zena, who will introduce who'll introduce the alumni. So Zena, over to you. Hello, uh, I'm Zena, the Entrepreneurship Program Manager at uh, Jusur's organization. Uh, I would like to in introduce our panelists today who are uh, uh, graduates from our different programs, as Leontine said. Uh, uh, we have Randa al uh, she's a, teacher's, a teacher at one of Jusur uh, refugee education centers at Lebanon. We have Mirai Arnouk, she's a scholar uh, at Jusur scholarship program. Mirai is one of the recipients of Jusur's 100 Syrian Women, 10,000 Syrian Lives Scholarship. She's currently pursuing a master's degree at um, McGill University in the field of human nutrition, focusing on social determinants of health in Ghana. And we have Muhammad al Hamsi. He's a graduate of uh, one of Jusur's entrepreneurship different projects programs uh, he's based in jordan and i'm looking forward to tell you more and hear more from our beneficiaries um just to give you a quick update how this is going to be today um, i'm going to share with you like four mini videos after each video i'm going to ask our panelists uh, a question and they will answer these questions and then we'll move forward to the next one. And I'm just going to share my screen now. What comes to your mind when you hear the word education? School? University? Diploma? At Jusur, we see education as a journey of crossing a bridge to realize one's potential, to experiment, discover, invent, to ask bigger questions, the ones that can change the world. As we build our bridges, we make sure all Syrian children and youth are More School, about Jusur. University, diploma. At Jusur, we see education as a journey of crossing a bridge to realize one's potential, to experiment, discover, invent, to ask bigger questions, the ones that can change the world. As we build our bridges, we make sure all Syrian children and youth are able to cross them so they realize what, what they can become as they step towards their brighter future. We believe that crossing the bridge is a journey, not a destination, an experience that shouldn't be interrupted no matter the circumstances. At Jusur, 
We don't see education as a privilege. We see it as a right for everyone. What comes to your mind when you hear the word? Yeah, sorry, my internet apparently is acting up today. Um, so I want to would like to tell you a couple of things about Jesus' different programs that we have. Uh, the first most important thing is that Jusur uh, is an Arabic word, which means bridges, which makes a lot of sense uh, uh, about the video we just uh, watched together. Um, now I would like to explain more about our different programs. One of our programs and most important uh, uh, one that we love actually is the Refugee Education Program. Uh, one second, I think we need to share the slides here. Okay. I mean, yes, today is one of the days that we have technical issues. So please bear with me. Okay. Um, so the refugee education program, we have four schools now, uh, refugee education centers in Lebanon. Uh, we work with early childhood, primary education and prepare students as well. We have the scholarship programs. We uh, gave more than 277 scholarships uh, to uh, in, uh, 89 academic institutions covering 20 countries. Um, we have the entrepreneurship program. We've supported more than 378 startups, 1,930 entrepreneurs trained, more than 1 million spent in uh, trainings, and we have more than 5,000 community members in the entrepreneurship program. Um, we're going to show, uh, watch this uh, two minutes, less than two minutes video, which will show us how the title of this panel is, uh, what does it mean? Like Jusur's educational journey from kindergarten up to entrepreneurship. So we go through the whole uh, uh, period of uh, human beings evolving and revolving actually. <laughs> حب كثير لما شفته عم بيوزع عملات خيرية وهيك حبيته كثير وبضل بشاهده كل نهار أنا اسمي قاسم إبراهيم الويس من سوريا عايش بدور الزور وبدرس بمدرسة الجسور في عندي إخوات اثنين توم أتمنى أن يصير عندي تليفون خصوصي لحالي بدي صور يوتيوبر مشان أساعد العالم بدي أعمل عملات خيرية مثل أبو فلا بدي ساعد الناس اللي بشوفها لما لقيت اكل عم عم تتمتع كثير بصير يوتيوبر بطلع مصاري اول شخص بفرحه اختي ما قدرانين نساعدها من مشان ظروفنا هلا عمرها 10 سنين عندها ضعف نظر بعينها اليمين وبدي ساعدها كل شهر بدها تغيير كل شهرين بدها تغيير العدسات واللي عملنا نظارات جديده بس ليطبق عمرها 13 بنصير نعمل لها عمليه بالشام حلمي مشان يوتيوبر بدي بدي تليفون وبدي كاميرا وبدي مصمم واصدقاء بخليهم يساعدوني كيف بطبق المقاطع مثل العربي عم بقرا لما بعرف اعرف هج الم... لما بيبعثوا لي المتابعين مثلا شيء كتابه بيبعثوا لي اسمايلات او شيء بعرف اقرا او شيء Okay. Um, since uh, uh, we have Randa here, Randa, as we said, she's one of our uh, teachers at the uh, Refugee Education Centers at Jusur. Uh, Randa, we would love to know more about uh, your journey, um, the student's journey at uh, uh, Jusur's educational centers. Like, how do you see it? Like, how did it start? with you and usually your uh, students. Okay. Um, hello for everyone. Uh, my name is Randal Khouz, not Al Khouz. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm uh, 37 years old. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm an English teacher at Jusur. Uh, 
uh, I uh, studied uh, English uh, literature uh, at uh, the Damascus University, but I uh, was not able to continue my uh, studying there because uh, the bad circumstances uh, that uh, our country uh, suffered uh, from. So I, uh, I've been here in Lebanon since 2016. Uh, when I uh, when I came here, uh, uh, I was uh, really very confused because uh, it's uh, a new uh, uh, a new country uh, with a new people, a new curriculum, uh, and uh, uh, also the children that we were uh, 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 teaching. Uh, I was the teaching. Sorry, uh, they uh, they were uh, refugees, so they need a special uh, 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 treatment and. Uh, uh, Every, uh, all this uh, stuff uh, needs uh, uh, more practicing and uh, uh, more uh, uh, trainings. Um, so I uh, joined uh, Jusur uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, uh, actually, they helped me a lot uh, to improve myself. Uh, the most amazing thing about Jusur is uh, uh, they don't. Uh, uh, they see the areas uh, of development uh, in in the teachers, and they work on them. They work with the teachers and with uh, the students. So they helped uh, me a lot. Uh, uh, they encouraged me to to continue my studying. So I joined the, the Arab uh, Open University and uh, got a, a, a diploma certificate in uh, general education. Um, and uh, we uh, we uh, have uh, uh, attended many trainings uh, in classroom management, uh, in psychological uh, support, uh, um, uh, in English language also, uh, uh, many uh, uh, trainings that helped me a lot uh, to, to improve myself and to, uh, to be familiar with the uh, new uh, situation. I mean, the new students and the new uh, curriculum. Um, I also uh, um, had a certificate in uh, uh, TFL, uh, uh, in TFL Academy, from the TFL Academy, from the Amer American um, Academy. Uh, Jusur helped me a lot and uh, 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 always encouraged me to have uh, such uh, uh, trainings and uh, uh, courses. Uh, with the, the refugee uh, students, uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, always uh, encourage our students to, to become and to, to attend our uh, uh, lessons. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they always uh, work. So we, uh, we try our best to, uh, to encourage them and motivate them to, uh, to continue their uh, education. Uh, uh, we uh, focus on uh, four uh, main uh, subjects, English, Arabic, and uh, uh, math. Uh, uh, we also uh, uh, have uh, an, a subject uh, that is uh, identity. Uh, it talks about uh, Syria and uh, everything about Syria, the, uh, uh, the traditions, uh, the location, the borders, every, everything. Uh, so in this way, children uh, knows uh, more. Children know more about their country. Thank you, Renda. Um, so it's it's ladies first as always. So we'll go with Mirai. Um, Mirai, please tell us about your journey. How did it start, and how did you find uh, find out about Jesus' scholarship? Hello, everyone. Um... My name is Mireille. Uh, I'm one of uh, the Jusur Scholar, Scholars recipient. Um, my journey started just after I graduated uh, from university. I have a bachelor's in pharmacy, um, but I wanted to explore another major for my master's. I was so passionate about nutrition, but unfortunately there is no nutrition major as a master's in Syria. Uh, so for me, getting going abroad and having a scholarship was the only way for me to fulfill my ambition. So I started looking up for ways and um, a resource scholarship came up, I applied. Um, the application process was very smooth, I got interviewed. Uh, I still remember my interview, I couldn't speak two words in English, <laughs> but I kind of had to, uh, to do it. 
Um, so I got accepted. Just for supported me throughout the whole process, getting uh, going, and also um, sitting for my English test. Uh, so they kind of booked the test for me, which was like very expensive. So that I really appreciate. And then at that time, my scholarship was supposed to be in the US in Case Western Reserve University. Um, so I had to apply for the visa. So it was at Trump's time. So they, uh, it was when they had the ban uh, on seven countries, including Syria. So what, what happened is that I got refused after they put me on hold for six months. Um, so that was kind of <laughs> uh, very devastating. Um, so I kind of lost half of the funding that came from that university side. And but Jesur didn't kind of uh, let go on me. They held the fund for me and they asked me to uh, have admission in another university outside the US. So I went ahead, applied to so many universities all around the globe uh, in an attempt to have the uh, uh, the tuition fees money secured from the university. So I was able to get admission from um, uh, L London School of Tropical Medicine, from uh, university in Sweden, University of Toronto, and finally McGill in Canada. But none of them were able to give me a scholarship to, to cover the tuition fees. And as you may know, it's very expensive for international students. And once again, Jasur didn't like give up on me. They they went out of their way and they asked one of the do one of the donors um, to donate the rest of the money. So this is how I was able to go to go to McGill. Now I study at McGill my master since 2020. Uh, so that's I'm very uh, thankful for. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... I don't know, Lorraine, do you want to say anything? Because I saw like you turned on your camera. No, 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 it's okay. I was just saying how inspiring these stories are. And I'm really, I'm really pleased that you guys are here. So no, please continue. Okay, thank you. So last but not least for this question, we have Mohamed al Hamsi. He's a founder of, uh, we can call him a serial founder, a serial entrepreneur actually, but here's to, he's here today to speak about his journey and how his road uh, crossed with Jusur. Go ahead, Mohammed. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mohammed al Hamsi. I came uh, from Syria in 2013. After that, I studied aeronautical engineer. And during my study, uh, I get an opportunity to generate uh, income through an uh, internship within an institution. And then I started uh, hearing in the same institution about the entrepreneurship. Uh, after that, I uh, st started to read more entrepreneurship, uh, get an uh, uh, training opportunities uh, and about the field of entrepreneurship until I get opportunity to work uh, with organization uh, as an entrepreneurship coach trainer. And after uh, that, after one year of work, I decided to start my uh, project, my own business. Um, and I able to obtain, a, a, to secure a fund uh, from an uh, ARC, uh, IRC institution to respond uh, to a social, a challenge through the uh, through the project, uh, and we decided to work in an agricultural sector as an open market for refugees to work. Uh, we decided to build a platform that connect the agriculture service provider as a farmer and uh, technicians, uh, such as landscape uh, technicians. Uh, with the uh, service seekers and between the nurseries uh, with the service seekers again. So it's a marketplace for products and services in agriculture sector. Uh, during this time, uh, as I want to start an startup, 
but uh, as we all know that the startup uh, need uh, a lot of time uh, to generate a profit and so to generate income to myself. And I uh, decided to open uh, a small business in the side. Uh, it's named Healthy Choice. Healthy Choice provide healthy, delicious food as uh, a subscription model. So uh, during uh, this period of time, I generate income to myself. And at the same time, I worked on my social enterprise to do the required impact. Uh, after that, uh, we worked with an uh, accelerate, accelerators like Chisur. Uh, we worked on investment readiness and how to get an investment and how to validate uh, our work. Uh, and after that, we we able to, to obtain an investment from Magdadi Agricultural Materials Company. Uh, this is a big company in agriculture sectors. Now our company Twig uh, generate a profit, do the desired impact that we want, and work on multiple projects. Nice. Thank you, Muhammad. Um, so next question. The first one was a long question that needed a lot of time, but we felt that the background of uh, uh, our beneficiaries is very important. So you can like relate more to the upcoming questions. <clears throat> We're gonna see this video, it's a quick one. I always was an early kid. I loved buying computer parts and assembling them. I used to fix iPhones back in Syria, and at the end, it became sort of my like sidekick in Syria. And after a while in the university, the security situation started deteriorating. I quickly started looking for opportunities to study abroad. And one day, my friend posted, I guess, on my Facebook wall. He's like, uh, look at this uh, scholarship opportunity. It might be something you'd be interested in. It was actually the scholarship that just sewered it. I went to the website, applied on the Google form. You know, I'm taking my shot. I'm going to try it, see if this gets me anywhere. July 2012, I received an email saying that I got accepted to Sewer Illinois Tech Scholarship. I was just overjoyed. I was really happy. That was like a dream come true. It was like finally my opportunity to start, you know, a new journey. Being in school was fun, but also challenging. I was away from my family, I was away from my community, and I was also keeping up with the news in Syria, which was very, very devastating. I think the Jesuit Scholarship helped me a lot, not only academically and like getting into the scholarship and getting into school, but also preparing me for the professional environment, prepared my resume, learn new skills, and how it taught me how to learn. How can I acquire information from the environment I'm in and really thrive in new ways? Apple was always my dream company. In my sophomore year, it's where I built my first app ever and I published it on the App Store. After I graduated in 2016, I uh, got my first full-time job at Apple. Right now, I'm a software engineer on the clinical health records team. Now I'm working on software and contributing and having an impact on like billions of devices around the world, which feels really, really amazing. I think scholarships like the one I got are very important. It definitely changed my life. And I think education is a gift that has an exponential impact. It doesn't stop at one person. I think the whole Syrian generation deserves an opportunity like the one I got, because I believe with the right education, we can change the entire story. We can change the entire narrative. So, uh, our next question is program impact in one minute. What was the program impact, whatever Jesus program you're in uh, or was at, uh, what was the program impact on you? 
in a sentence or two. Let's start with Muhammad since we started last with you. Okay. Mm, actually, the program impact was a big impact. Of course, Jusur as a business accelerator is very beneficial to us as a business owner. Because at the beginning of our business, we are like a small child in the school. And we need uh, care and quick uh, guidance uh, from uh, really experts and uh, masters in the field, especially when related to uh, legal issues. In my case, Jusur support me to register. Uh, to register my company. Even that in Jordan, it's not easy at all to register a company uh, uh, from uh, a Syrian. Uh, because as you know, I'm Syrian, so it's not easy at all to register. Um, so that's... Thank you, Mohammed. And thank you for sticking to one sentence. Uh... Uh, Mireille, can you please let us know, like program impact, scholarship impact. I know you're not done yet and you're still a scholar, uh, but up until today. Oh, there's a lot actually. Uh, first, I wouldn't have been able to have a master's degree or, um, or an opportunity for a better life other than this scholarship. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the future, uh, having had a, or like I will be having a degree from one of the best 30 universities in, in the world, which is Miguel. So I'm, I'm really optimistic about the job prospects. Um, also, also being at Miguel, like through Jusur, allowed me to, um, I just came back from uh, Ghana in Africa for my master's project. So having been at Miguel allowed me to explore uh, more. Um, and be able to build skills in my research uh, journey. Nice. Renda, uh, so uh, we've heard the program impact on you and on your journey from your own eyes and point of view and from your experience with the students. How do you see the impact of Jusur's education uh, program uh, centers in Lebanon affecting, impacting the students we have? Uh, first, uh, it uh, gives them a big opportunity to continue their learning, uh, to, to, uh, to study and uh, not only learning the subjects and the, the, the basic uh, uh, subjects, the, uh, the, um, they also uh, educate them to be, uh, um, uh, to be, uh, يعني, uh, I mean, uh, to be, uh, uh, practical in this life, to be uh, uh, good uh, people in this life, uh, it uh, motivates their uh, critical thinking and uh, um, it makes them uh, creative, I think. Uh, throw uh, not only uh, as I mentioned the the main subject throw throw the uh, other subjects like life life skills and uh, identity and many other uh, activities and uh, Nice training. Thank you. Thank you, Renda. Um, I hope uh, our mini videos are not boring you guys um, because I'm about to share a new, another one. أنا اسمي سامي الأحمد أنا سوري مقيم بمصر ب 2012 قررت إنه أنا أولدي راسي لمصر فبلشت بجامعتي الجديدة ساعة الطلاب اللي عم يسجلوا إنه يصير الموضوع أسهل لهم بعد حوالي سنة قلت إنه طب أنا ليش عم ساعد الناس بس بجامعتي ليش ما بيعمل شيء أكبر هون خطر لي فكرة إنه أنشأت مبادرة خطوة اللي بتساعد الطلاب السوريين والوافدين إنه هن يكملوا تعليمهم العالي في مصر ضلينا عم نشتغل حوالي سنة بعد سنة وأنا عم بتصفح الإنترنت بأحد الصفحات لقيت مكتوب مسابقة لريادي الأعمال لهلا بتذكر إنه ثلاث مرات كانت أو أنا عم بكتب الأبليكيشن أقول يعني إنه أصلاً ما بعرف شو يعني ريادة أعمال فكيف فيني فوز هيك مسابقة 
بس قلت يعني ليش لا خليني اجرب اول مرحله بعدين المرحله الثانيه دخلنا على التصويت أه، وصلنا للتوب 10 صارت اخر مرحله بالاختيار بعد ما خلص اللايف بعد ما اعلان الجوائز بحوالي ساعتين قلت خليني افتح الفيسبوك شوف مين الفائزين وبارك لهم فتحت عم بتطلع لقيت اسمنا انا يعني هيك كنت جامد وما في يعني كثير شيء عم دور بعالي بس انا مستغرب مبسوط استوعبت انه لا خلاص نحن فعلا فزنا هيك نطيت يا جماعه انا نحن كسبنا جائزه جسور طبعا بالنسبه لي كان الهدف الرئيسي انه هو الجائزه آه ولكن بعدين اكتشفت انه آه اللي بيقدمه جسور هو كان اكبر بكثير من الجائزه دائما لما حدا بيقول لي شو هي من اللحظات اللي غيرت لك حياتك بقول مسابقه جسور لانه هي اللي خلتني ابدا اعرف شيء عن يعني رياده اعمال هي اللي سمعت هاي الكلمه بالنسبه لي بلشت طريقه تفكيري تختلف صار انه طب كيف بدي اعمل بروجكت سكيلبل كيف فيني اعمله من انيشيتيف لستارت اب كيف ممكن يكون سستينبل كل هاي القصص كيف ممكن تصير ف فب 2016 اطلقنا مرجع طبعا اول ما اطلقنا مرجع كان في البوت كامب تبع جسور نطور اكثر نلاقي البزنس الموديل الافضل عملنا اكثر من مره بيفيتنج اللي هو تغيير البزنس موديل مرجع هلا حاليا هي تعتبر اكبر منصه تعليميه بالشرق الاوسط بتوصل الطلاب للفرص التعليميه المختلفه سواء جامعات سواء كورسات سواء منح باكثر من 2.5 مليون زياره شهريه على الموقع فدائما بحس انه هي من النقط اللي ما بنساها اللحظه اللي دخلنا فيها او يعني كسبنا فيها جائزه جسور والدعم اللي قدموه لازم دائما اعمل شيء مثل هذا الموضوع للستارت ابس الجديده انه انا ساعد الستارت ابس الجديده واعمل لهم منتورز لو في اي بروجرام تبع جسور انه انا ساعد فيه لانه بحس ان الديوتي مثل ما كان في ناس عم تساعدني ساعد ناس ثانيه So, um, guys, if if there is one thing you would like us to have done differently, what would that be? I'm going to let you choose who's going to speak. So if Jusur could have done anything differently, and obviously all of us are always learning and just pivoting on our methods and methodologies, like depending what's going on. So you as, uh, when you left Syria, for example, um, what thing could have helped you, helped you more? What we could have supported you? Uh, and doing differently, for example. I'm going to start with Mireille. Apparently, no one is going to speak. <laughs> um, now, having you said that, it wasn't on my mind, but I remember I was I was privileged to have a cousin in town in Montreal when I first moved. Uh, so that helped me in the first few days. And honestly, I don't know if, if Jusur has the capacity or how would that translate, you know, like because you're sending people to so many countries and cities. Uh, but I guess like the first few, um, let's say a month would like would require a closer up attention for the scholar. And also I know from experience that whenever I needed like really um, support, I could go to, to Jusur and ask for it. And I only, I don't know, like if we're a bit uh, reserved as Syrians, but we kind of leave it to the last minute to reach out until things are really bad. So I think, and I, it's only because I tried and I knew that Jusur was able to support me better, but maybe for the new scholars, uh, maybe like in-person meetings, like not, not in-person, like virtually, but face-to-face -face meetings, uh, maybe once a month. Uh, especially at the beginning of their journey could be helpful just to understand what Jusur can do better for them and just keeping on a closer contact. But I understand there's like 270 scholars, so that might be problematic for the person coordinating all of this. But having said that, Jusur has been like really good at um, reaching out. Like there is like uh, every semester, like a report we, uh, we do. So th there is a chance for connecting, but for me personally, like having seen how much Jusur is 
willing to help, uh, I would have like preferred to be on a closer contact, especially in the first stage. Yeah, I think we should add them to our uh, monthly team meetings, Sarah. <laughs> All the scholars. Um, Arenda, what do you wish we can do differently or something, anything? I, I think uh, uh, maybe Jusur can uh, reach all the refugee children uh, in, uh, in Lebanon in more uh, uh, areas uh, in Lebanon. And um, that's it. Uh, the program uh, is perfect and everything is perfect. I think uh, they need uh, just more uh, to, to, to reach more uh, refugees. So expanding the number of uh, yes, refugees yes. we serve, right? Yeah. Okay, that's that's a good one. Thank you, Renda. <laughs> and Mireille as well. Hamad. Uh, actually, I don't have anything as specific, but uh, I don't like the, the remote connections. I don't like the Zoom and every platform that connect us um, in, in a big uh, and different distance, uh, in a big distance. Actually, there is a, a positive thing, um, I have to say, but uh, recently I saw that every, or most of the institutions uh, after Corona, they connect just in, uh, in this way. So I hope that we can connect more, more lively, more, uh, and uh, face to face, because that, uh, as you know, we we connect in feeling, not just what we talk and what. Totally, I do agree. Yeah, I, I think I'm done with that. Like Zoom meetings, Zoom events, trainings, mentorings, everything is online. Right. It's great, as you said. I mean, like there's a flexibility element to it, uh, but uh, yes, I think we need like more hybrid events at least. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, one last video, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. giving back. So we have a motto in Jusur that when you empower youth, youth will empower youth. Um, and as we've heard Sami, uh, Sami Ahmed's story in the previous video that he's planning, he's always giving back. Like when we reach out to him to mentor one of our startups, current startups, he always go like, yes, of course, I'll do that. I have to give back. We don't require that. It's just, I'm just telling the story of what happens. Um, so it means of giving back. Um, I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on giving back to the community. Uh, and for example, if, if, if it's something that just who helped in or not, um, just the giving back concept and the importance of it. I'm going to start with Brenda. We'll go back to Randa. Hamad. Okay. Mm. I think now the return trip to the community has um, started through uh, the two enterprises that I work for. Inherited Choice, 
we have provided our products and services to more than 1,500 as a monthly subscriptions to control their diseases. Uh, at it week, uh, more than 15 farmers partially and continuously work. Uh, it's always the dream to return to Syria and transfer the experience and, um, and the experts so that we can build we can build it and live together. Thank you, Mohammed. Mireille, can you tell us on the, of what do you think about giving back to the community, whether it's back in Syria or wherever you are living? Um, uh, just to, what do you think? From my experience, giving back can be through so many ways. Um, up until now, the ways I was able to um, give back is, for example, when I first moved here, I had a lot to say about the application process, not only about the school, but applying to universities. And that was something the youth in Syria is, um, is newly experiencing. So I published about my experience. I, I still get like up until like now, two years from then, uh, questions. So people would be like, oh, like I'm doing this. How do I go about that? So um, this is something I'm always happy to do. Uh, also, I was part of Jusur's uh, selection process for the new cohort in McGill uh, scholars. Honestly, I was so happy when Jusur asked me to do this um, because I <laughs> like it's it's really nice to be acknowledging that someone went through the experience, so they already know a lot about the context and about the difficulties and how to evaluate the applic applicants um, like really fairly because you already went through all of this. So that I was very happy about. So I was part of the interview uh, process and the whole selection process. Um, also one thing like um, I did because I'm really passionate about. So for me, the only way was to afford a master's degree or to get a master's de degree is by getting a scholarship. So I really, um, I'm really very passionate about like helping others uh, get education, just like I got mine. So when four months after I joined McGill, um, I um, I became the co-chair for Wusk McGill Club, which is a club that sponsors refugees to come and study in Canada. Um, and it was in my year where we had to go for, for the referendum. So McGill students had to vote, do you want this um, program to continue or not? And if yes, would you be willing to donate more money so more students would come in? And the beneficiaries of this uh, project are refugees, whether are Syrians or Africans as well, ma many countries. So in that year, we were able to increase the seats from three to five students a year. So that is something I'm very... Uh, happy that I took part in. Of course, it was like a big team's effort, but I was so happy to be part in. Um, also, I think uh, we cannot underestimate that how, like when uh, us being abroad, we know both contexts, we know both resources. So sometimes like there was like a club at McGill Syrian Students Club. They wanted to give back to Syria. So they wanted um, they wanted to be connected to organizations there. and me having like worked with NGOs in Syria, I was able to make this connection. So facilitating the help, let's say, or connecting people is also something cannot be um, unappreciated or like, <laughs> uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe hopefully for the future, I'll be able to help more. But for now, this is what I was able to accomplish. <laughs> great, great, great. So um, I don't know if Randa is back or not, or her internet connection is not working well. So um, I promise I'm done with the my mini videos that I showed you all uh, four times here. And uh, our panelists, Mohamed Mireille and Randa, are here to answer any questions you have in our flipped session. 
Also, you can find us, Jesus team, the great Suha Tutanji, uh, Refugee Education uh, Center's uh, director, academic director at Jusur. Saira Shadid, uh, she's the scholarship program manager at Jusur, and I, the entrepreneurship program manager. We can, all of us, answer any questions that you have, if you have any, and we would love to, like, just please. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so Dimitri is inviting us all to the Discord channel. Hi, maybe I'll take the opportunity as the sort of MC to sort of have the privilege of asking the first question. So first of all, thank you very much, Suha, really great to see you. I've, I've met you a few times and it's really always great to see you. Um, so I've got a question about the entrepreneurship um, track um, and it was really inspiring to hear what you've done. I sort of wonder how easy is it for your, um, for your entrepreneurs to register as a legal entity, you know, wherever they are. I mean, I imagine it was mostly Turkey, but does this, does this also happen in Lebanon and in Jordan? And my second question for the entrepreneurship track is how easy is it to get funding and investment for the organizations to grow? Okay. Um, so the entrepreneurship program at Jusur operates at Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq. Um, in all of our recent program, programs in the previous like three years, we've always included legal consultancy and support because we know it's very challenging. For example, uh, it's very hard to register because there is there are cre clear guidelines, but then there is the safety things with the countries that they need to be signed. And then they're like, no, it's rejected and we can't tell you why. For example, in Muhammad al Hamsi's uh, case, it took like the program ended like in December, that the project ended in December 2020, 2020. And the registration process until he finished the things, like I, can't, I, I remember it was April or May 2021. So the program, like four months program, and it almost took a year to register the company. But it worked well for him. Um, we do face a lot of challenges. Sometimes um, it depends on the sector, for example. Not every sector, uh, in every sector, depending on the country, you're allowed to have a company uh, if you're a foreigner, for example. Um, some other restrictions include, for example, in uh, the sector of uh, building and uh, real estate, you need to have like a large sum of money deposited in the account uh, of the company, which is not always feasible. And then we have little issues, other issues uh, for home-based businesses. Like if we have a lady that is doing pastries or stuff like that, she can register by law, it's okay. But then the owners of the building will not give her the permit that they allow this, for example. And we have other challenges, for example, um, some of the um, refugees are not aware of the rules. Um, they think that if they registered a company and they have a successful business, uh, it's not going to be a unicorn in no time, but it's it's, it's something that giving them um, a good monthly allowance. They think that uh, the support from other organization, NGOs, livelihood NGOs would stop, and that is wrong. Because, so there is lots of challenges. Uh, um, like, for example, in Iraq, it's not very clear. Um, we never had a, a, a Syrian uh, founder startups uh, wanting to register in Iraq, but they usually take the consultancy uh, services that we provide. For example, in Lebanon, it's similar to Jordan, but with what's happening in Lebanon, uh, people are not really wanting to register as long. And uh, anyways, yeah, uh, that the situation there is not very good. In Turkey, I think it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, better than Jordan, for example. Um, but it's better in terms of uh, from legal perspective, but uh, but it's worse in terms of uh, language barrier. And let's say in Jordan, people are more welcoming than Turkey, so Jordanians and Turkish. So, so 
it's never easy, 100% easy. There is always some tricks, um, definitely. And and we're only speaking about uh, uh, refugees outside of the camps. We can, like this does not apply for refugees inside of the camps. Um, sorry, what was the second question? About funding, how how yeah, successful? funding um, for entrepreneurship in general. The main issue of it is access to finance. It's 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 the most painful one. So programs like the ones we're doing at Jusur, it gives them a chance to get like this equity free seed money prize that could help them in building their initial stages that they could be ready to go into other accelerators. But for example, uh, it's not uh, nationality uh, tied kind of uh, investment because usually the startups are, uh, they don't fund uh, themselves and, or by family members. And then they go and try getting these prize monies that do not take equities or shares to build their minimum viable products and go to the next level. So what Jusur is doing is taking these people who are like older than MVP usually and have solid ideas and then invest uh, trainings, mentorships, uh, legal services, design services, and everything that we do, we give it all to all of the beneficiaries. And at the end of the program, each program, we provide a demo day, which is a pitching event to investors. By investors, we mean, um, uh, so we divide usually people to different judge, judging panels. Uh, it depends on the level sector because the investors usually have specific criteria they would like to invest in startups. And some of them are not ready yet for angel investment or like VC funds or stuff like that. They just want incubation. Some of them need acceleration at this phase. So after giving them different criteria, they pitch. And we actually present them to uh, investors in this time. And uh, some of them will get seed money prize, uh, prizes that would help them work on more on their programs. Like for example, Merge and the startups, like we have like a full video gallery that we love, but we could not show you all the videos we have. <laughs> and so they, they would get this seed money and then they would move to the next level. It's never easy, but it's 100% doable, like 100% doable for everyone, if everyone would follow. Like the, the simple logic of creating something, making it work, having traction, getting people to buy it. And not only because you see it as something that is great and everyone should buy it and doing a market research. If you do that, definitely, definitely, you could get investment. There is a lot of money in the MENA region, but it's the, the generating the quality startups. And it's okay. It's like it's a whole world kind of issue. It's not just a, a, a local issue. Um, so yeah, definitely. And and we see all types and kinds of startups that. But yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's very hard as well, like for everyone. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. We're just coming to the top of the hour now. Um, mm -hmm. We have a few more sessions which are related to, educate, to education for refugees and entrepreneurship. We posted the links in the, in the chat, so thank you. But to the team at Jusur, thank you so much for being here. I've seen, I've, I've known the organization for a very long time. You know, I would say since 2015. So I'm so excited to see how it's grown and Grace is a good friend of mine. And I know Rami, and I, I think I know the whole Jusur family. So I'm really excited to have you here and thank you so much for being part of our summit. We feel very honored that you were able to come and be here with us. So thank you very much. And we hope to see you at some of the sessions. So goodbye, Ramadan Karim, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great bye. day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.